Welcome back. Now we're going to talk about isomorphism and organizational fields. And in order to understand the relationship between isomorphism and organizational fields, it's important to understand what an organizational field is. Let's draw a very simple stakeholder map. Okay. You can see me. I always like to use oil companies as examples because they're so big and they're so diverse and pretty much everybody knows something about oil companies. So let's take a company like Chevron, CVX, I believe, is their stock symbol, okay? If you look at it, and if you don't know what a stakeholder map is, by the way, uh, check on my channel or I'll post links or something like that uh, so that you can um, watch my videos on the stakeholder model, and I think that'll help you understand what a stakeholder map is. But let's look at Chevron, CVX, okay? Chevron probably has the U.S. government as, some, uh, as an organization that supervises them, so probably a primary stakeholder. Okay. Customer base, well they definitely have U.S. customers. And if you were to look at <coughs> their suppliers, I believe Halliburton, Stock symbol, I believe, is HAL. Does a lot of the oil pipelines and things like that. Um, oh, let's think of one more primary stakeholder, potentially. Oh, and of course, they're going to have very similar stockholders. Same kinds of hedge funds, same kinds of major holders that you'd find in that. CVX. Okay? So they've got some more. Of course, there are many more. I'm just doing this for purposes of discussion. Okay? Now, let's, uh, let's erase this here because I need just a little more room. Let's take another company like ExxonMobil. XOM, I believe, is their stock symbol. Hopefully, you can, yeah, you can see that there. Okay? So ExxonMobil, of course, answers to the U.S. government. They use the same suppliers as Halliburton. In fact, I bet you a lot of the major stockholders are the same. It's the same hedge funds, the same major investors. And they've got the same U.S. customers. Huh. This is starting to get interesting, isn't it? And what if we take another one, like BP? Okay. Oh, I'll be darned. They also answer the U.S. government quite a bit. They also have a lot of U.S. customers. They also answer to Halliburton. And they probably have the same major stockholders. This is interesting. Okay, so what does this tell us about isomorphism? Okay. For example, if they have the same suppliers like Halliburton, Halliburton is going to dictate to them that they use, for example, Halliburton standard order forms. So guess what? If you work like in logistics for um, ExxonMobil and you switch over to work for Chevron, well, since you've already been used to dealing with Halliburton, there's probably not much difference in switching over between ExxonMobil and Chevron or even working to BP. And in fact, um, let's say you're a lawyer for ExxonMobil and you do some sort of oil law. Well, guess what? It's the same U.S. government laws, so whether you went to any of these firms, you would kind of have a similar sort of a job. And it goes to the same, if you're entertaining the same customers, you appeal to the same customers in the same way, irrespective of which firm you work for. And guess what? Stockholders or owners of these firms are going to exert similar kinds of pressures on each of the firms. So what you see is that, yes, these are different firms, but there are a tremendous amount of similarities between those firms, and that stems uh, in many ways from external pressures, okay? who their owners, who their major stakeholders are. So they tend to look the same. And of course, these pressures over time result in employees behaving the same, structures looking the same. And I can guarantee you there are executives that have moved from ExxonMobil to BP, and guess what they do at BP? They do it the ExxonMobil way. And when they move from BP to Chevron, guess what happens? They still do it the ExxonMobil way, and this can go vice versa. So the firms kind of look the same. And you see how messy these lines are? The messier these lines are, you're going to notice that this is how you can tell that you're in the same organization field. Okay? Now, let me take another oil company. One that's different. 
Let's take Gazprom. It's a Russian oil company. Okay. Um, well, they don't really deal with the U.S. government that much. They don't have U.S. customers at all. Maybe they get some supplies from Halliburton. Maybe. We want to bet the stockholders are even different because a lot of their stockholders tend to be Russians, right? So not U.S. stockholders even. And so they probably have Russian stockholders. So the Ru Russian stockholders, I'm, I'm saying owners here because an owner is a stockholder. Okay. They probably also deal with the Russian government. And... They probably also have some Russian suppliers too, right? I don't know who they are. Okay, so what you what you can interpret from this, as you see, this isn't exactly in the same organizational field. Um, you know, maybe if you went from BP to Gazprom, you know, you'd be familiar with how to work for with Halliburton. So there'd be some similarities. Um, but if let's say you were uh, a lawyer, you'd have to know Russian law, so that'd be quite different and you'd have Russian owners having different kinds of pressures on the firm than American stockholders were. So you'd see that actually working in Gazprom I think would be quite different from working with uh, Chevron, BP, or ExxonMobil, right? There'd be a little bit of similarities, but not much, because again, you're saying that um, it's a completely different organizational field, or almost completely different. Now let's say you really want to do something crazy, like you wanted to work for ExxonMobil, and you switched over to Wendy's fast food joint, right? You want to work for Wendy's. Well, I'd be willing to bet you the stockholders are going to be different. Um, Halliburton, no, because again, Halliburton is oil supplies. They have their own suppliers. So they have their own owners. Their own suppliers. And when these customers, while they are both American customers, um, I would think it would be a different kind, a different subset of U.S. customers that buys uh, oil in bulk versus the kind that goes to Wendy's for a hamburger, right? So it's different customers. Um, but they still have to answer to U.S. government regulations. Okay, so you can see Wendy's. is in many ways even more different probably than working for Gazprom. Um, because again, their dealings with the U.S. government would also be in a very different capacity. You know, one is selling hamburgers, one is selling oil. So it'd be very different kinds of legal issues that you'd have. So you'd almost have to learn a totally new job if you switched off and started working at Wendy's. Because Wendy's is clearly outside this particular oil organizational field. Okay. So what I want you to take away from this video is that firms within the same organizational field tend to resemble each other because of a common group of stakeholders. That's what helps make them so similar. Whereas firms outside a given organizational field may have some similarities, but they won't necessarily have as many similarities as they would if they were in the same field. Great. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you liked it, please give me a like, like a, you know, one of those thumbs up things. Uh, subscribe. I'm definitely trying to build my subscriber base. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, post them down below. And I normally uh, respond to comments within 24 hours. And thanks for watching. In our next video, we're going to talk about legitimacy versus efficiency in organizations. Looking forward to seeing you then.